Hello everyone, and welcome to our channel. Today we'll be talking about cross-contact and cross-contamination. While these two terms may sound similar, they have different meanings and implications for food safety. Cross-contamination occurs when harmful bacteria or other microorganisms such as virus are transferred from one food to another during food preparation and storage. This can happen when a surface, utensil, or person comes into contact with contaminated food and then comes into contact with another food that is not contaminated. For example, if a cutting board is used to prepare raw chicken and is not properly cleaned before being used to chop vegetables, the vegetables can become contaminated with harmful bacteria from the chicken. Cross-contamination can happen by direct contact between raw and cooked foods, improper handling of utensils, inadequate hand hygiene, and contaminated surfaces. To prevent cross-contamination, always use separate utensils, cutting boards, and other equipment when handling raw meats and other potentially hazardous foods. Additionally, be sure to properly clean and sanitize all surfaces and equipment between uses. Proper cooking will usually minimize or eliminate the chances of foodborne illness. The cross-contact term, on the other hand, refers to the transfer of a food allergen from one food to another. This can happen when an allergen-containing food comes into contact with a food that does not contain the allergen, either directly or indirectly. For example, if a spoon is used to serve peanut butter and is then used to serve jelly, the jelly can become contaminated with peanut allergens. To prevent cross-contact, it is important to always label allergen-containing foods and store them separately from other foods. Use separate utensils and equipment when handling allergen-containing foods, and be sure to properly clean and sanitize all surfaces and equipment between uses. Color code equipment and utensils also enhances separation of functions and to separate workspaces within a food facility. Preventing cross-contamination in the food industry can significantly reduce the risk of foodborne illness. The Food and Drug Administration outlines recommendations for preventing cross-contamination, empathizing their importance in safeguarding public health. Proper personal hygiene is fundamental in preventing cross-contamination. Thoroughly washing hands with soap and warm water for at least 20 seconds before and after handling food, after using the restroom, and after touching potentially contaminated surfaces. Using disposable gloves when handling ready-to-eat foods to avoid direct contact and potential bacterial transfer. Wearing clean and appropriate clothing, including hairnets, beard covers, and jewelry restrictions, to prevent contamination. Separating different types of foods is crucial to prevent cross-contamination. Keeping raw meats, poultry, and seafood separate from ready-to-eat foods to prevent the transfer of harmful bacteria. Using separate cutting boards and utensils for raw and cooked foods to avoid cross-contamination. Storing raw meats, poultry, and seafood on lower shelves or in separate containers to prevent drips onto other foods. Maintaining a clean and sanitized environment is vital for preventing cross-contamination. Regularly cleaning and sanitizing food preparation surfaces, equipment, and utensils using appropriate sanitizers. Ensuring proper dishwashing by using hot water and effective detergents or sanitizing agents to eliminate bacteria and viruses. Using disposable or frequently washed towels and sponges to prevent the spread of bacteria. Proper food handling techniques are essential to minimize the risk of cross-contamination. Adhering to proper temperature controls when storing, cooking, and reheating food to inhibit the growth of bacteria. Thawing frozen food in the refrigerator to prevent bacterial growth during thawing. Education and training play a vital role in preventing cross-contamination. Establishing comprehensive training programs for employees to promote awareness of proper food handling and hygiene practices. Encouraging open lines of communication among staff members to address concerns, share knowledge, and reinforce safe practices. Preventing allergen cross-contact is crucial in the food industry to ensure the safety of consumers with allergies. The FDA outlines recommendations for controlling allergen cross-contact in food processing. The FDA emphasizes the importance of processing controls, such as separation by time and space, to minimize the unintentional introduction of allergens into foods. By implementing appropriate procedures and controls, food processors can prevent cross-contact and accurately declare allergens on labels, therefore safeguard the health of sensitive individuals. 
The FDA has identified some recommendations to better understand, evaluate, or create an allergen cross-contact control program, but these recommendations may not apply to every situation or type of facility. The process of preventing allergen cross-contact begins with the receipt of labels and ingredients at the facility. To effectively control cross-contact during this stage, the following measures are recommended. Compare received labels and ingredients against product specifications to identify any discrepancies in allergen declarations. Segregate and hold ingredients and labels that do not match the product specification in a defined area with restricted access. Inspect materials for damaged packaging and exposed or leaking substances. Remove damaged packages and segregate them from the shipment for return or destruction. Clearly identify allergen content on packages using a color code system to ensure easy identification during storage and production. Establish controls to ensure the integrity of ingredients received in bulk, including verifying tanker and railcar cleaning for allergens and implementing clean transfer areas and equipment cleaning. Reject shipments that do not meet the identified requirements. Proper storage of allergens and allergen-containing materials is essential to minimize the risk of cross-contact. The following procedures can be implemented to control cross-contact during storage. Segregate allergen-containing ingredients in dedicated storage areas or separate shelving to provide physical separation from non-allergen-containing ingredients. Implement procedures for staging and storing allergens below non-allergen-containing materials to prevent cross-contact in case of packaging material damage or leakage. Use color coding, tagging, or other distinctive marks to identify containers of ingredients or foods containing different allergens. Utilize dedicated closed containers for storing allergen-containing ingredients and products securely. Establish procedures to prevent mixing non-allergen-containing ingredients with allergen-containing materials or different allergens when using bulk storage tanks or silos. To prevent allergen cross-contact during food processing, separation in time and space between allergen-containing and non-allergen-containing materials is necessary. Facility, equipment, and process design play a crucial role in controlling cross-contact. The following considerations are recommended. Incorporate features in plant layout and process design that minimize the potential for cross-contact. Establish traffic patterns and a unidirectional flow to prevent unrestricted movement of employees between allergen-containing and allergen-free zones. Provide shielding, partitions, covers, and catch pans to protect unpacked products. Review facility and process design for potential allergen cross-contact during new installations or upgrades. Configure processing lines with sufficient space or physical barriers to minimize cross-contact from product spillage and splattering. Consider dedicating specific sections of the facility for processing products containing specific allergens. Dedicate utensils, employee apparel, and tools to specific processing lines or products whenever possible. Clean and sanitize these items after use to prevent cross-contact. Use color-coded equipment. Implement production scheduling to separate the manufacture of allergen-containing products from non-allergen-containing products by time. Run allergen-containing products by the end of the production. When handling rework and work in progress, the following considerations should be made to minimize the risk of allergen cross-contact. Establish procedures to segregate and clearly identify rework and work in progress that contains allergenic ingredients. Separate storage areas or designated storage bins should be used to ensure that these materials do not come into contact with non-allergen-containing products. Before initiating rework or processing work in progress, ensure that the equipment and utensils used are thoroughly cleaned and sanitized to remove any allergen residues. This includes dedicated cleaning protocols specific to allergen removal. The cleaning procedures should be validated to ensure their effectiveness. Allergen control protocols that include measures such as equipment segregation, dedicated utensils and tools, and visual identification of employees working with allergen-containing materials. Maintain accurate records of rework and work-in-progress activities, cleaning and sanitation procedures performed, and any corrective actions taken. These records serve as a traceability measure and provide evidence of compliance with allergen control protocols.
Ensure that all employees involved in handling rework and processing work in progress receive training about identification of allergens, the hazards they pose, allergen control protocols specific to rework and work in progress, and the importance of record keeping. Records of employee training should be maintained in accordance with regulatory requirements. It is important to note that both cross-contamination and cross-contact can have serious consequences for consumers, particularly those with allergies or compromised immune systems. All employees in a food manufacturing facility are responsible to prevent these occurrences and ensure the safety of the customers. In conclusion, understanding the difference between cross-contamination and cross-contact is crucial for maintaining food safety in the workplace. By taking the necessary precautions to prevent these occurrences, we can ensure the safety and well-being of our customers. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed our video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more upcoming content. We wish you all the best and hope to see you again soon.